It is 10 a.m. here in Atlanta, 6 p.m. in Abu Dhabi. Hello, I'm Linda Kincaid in for Becky Anderson. Welcome to Connect the World. Well, a week after a unilateral ceasefire was announced in Ethiopia's war-torn Tigray region, the situation there shows no signs of improving. Fighters in the northern province this weekend laid out their demands as government troops were paraded out. What's left behind is a desperate situation. The World Food Programme says it has just resumed food assistance to 2 million people after fighting halted it, but it's already running low. It comes as Ethiopia's Human Rights Commission says the interruption of services like power and water is compounded by limited access to health services. CNN Sari Matawo is following the story from Nairobi and joins us now live. Uh, Larry, after eight months of fighting, uh, the United Nations has warned that there are more than 400,000 people facing famine in that region. Uh, uh, just explain what's being done to get that aid into them. So the World Food Program is one of the agencies that's already resumed shipments, but it's at its last stock, so that will not last so much longer. There are a few other aid agencies that are trying to get into this region to try and get the food, nutrition supplies, and other necessary equipment that they need to serve so many people. 400,000 are already in famine conditions, according to the UN. Another 1.8 million are on the brink. So that's how serious it is. And it's been a week since the Ethiopian government declared this unilateral ceasefire. In fact, the Ethiopian prime minister is saying this has been going on, the withdrawal of troops for at least a month before they finally made that announcement. But aid is not getting to the people that need it just yet. There is no complete access. Cash, food and fuel are running out in, in the capital, Mekele, and around that region. And the situation on the ground remains dire. This is the latest. Truckloads of supplies bound for people desperate for food in Ethiopia's Tigray region stand still at a checkpoint for days. This footage, filmed by Reuters more than a week ago, shows sacks of aid eventually being unloaded from the trucks at a warehouse near a checkpoint controlled by government allied forces. The stockpile here is little help to the people of Tigray without enough to eat. The UN warns shipments like these are critical as shortages of food in the war-torn region have sharply increased in the past few weeks. One of the most distressing trends is an alarming rise in food insecurity and hunger due to conflict. More than 400,000 people are estimated to have crossed the threshold into famine, and another 1.8 million people are on the brink of famine. The World Food Programme says it has resumed operations in Tigray, but is facing access problems from ongoing fighting and the destruction of key supply routes, like this bridge that the UN says was targeted by forces allied to the government. The Ethiopian government denies blocking aid and blames Tigrayan fighters for gutting the bridge. But the spokesman for the Tigray People's Liberation Front, which has been battling the government in an eight-month civil war, says the damage is part of the government's plan to cut off the region. The Amhara and Abyss forces are busy destroying and blowing up bridges, so they could, one, prevent humanitarian aid from reaching the people of Tigray. And second, and more importantly for them, to prevent Tigray defense forces from taking over the western part of Tigray. The urgent need for food aid coinciding with a major shift in battle. A week ago, the Tigray defense forces retook the regional capital, Mekele. It's a blow to the government, which, with the help of Eritrean soldiers, forced the fighters out of the city last November. The foreign ministry criticized the Grand Forces for at first rejecting a ceasefire called by the government. The cessation of hostilities was taken unilaterally from our side. However, to implement this ceasefire fully, it needs two to tango. The other side has to react appropriately. But on Sunday, Tigray set out conditions for a negotiated ceasefire that include an independent investigation into alleged war crimes and a safe corridor for aid to reach the region. This follows a show of power by Tigrayan forces as they paraded thousands of captured Ethiopian soldiers through their recaptured territory. But it's a victory that could be short-lived. Food and fuel are running out in the city because of a blockade by Ethiopian forces. Eyewitnesses say government forces and militias are obstructing roads out of the city and there is no power there, leaving many homes without running water. Conditions that will surely bring more misery to civilians if help does not arrive soon.
So one way to get aid to people with so many roads blocked is airdrops. And the World Food Program is now saying it's cautiously optimistic that an air bridge could be set up in the coming days to aid with that with delivery. Elinda? Yeah, Larry, let's hope it gets in uh, there soon. In terms of the regional leaders uh, in Tigray, they have accepted a ceasefire in principle, but there are conditions. What do they want? The leaders of Tigray say they will not adhere to this unilateral ceasefire declared by the Ethiopian military unless Eritrean troops are pulled out of Tigray and there's an independent investigation. They want an international body to look after this, not somebody in Ethiopia. So that is finally, we're seeing conditions that they said only yesterday how they could agree to the ceasefire if that happens. The Ethiopian government, the way it's been looking at this, is it did not pull out of this militarily, but for humanitarian reasons. The farming season is beginning to grow, and they want people to be able to till their land, and that's why they say they've been pulling out for at least a month, and it only really concluded last Monday when they made this announcement. But it still looks like it's a long way off. There are very hardline positions, both by the Ethiopian government and by the fighters. So if they can agree to some sort of dialogue and implement this ceasefire, it will really be helpful for so many people that in, are in dire need of aid.